Hi, welcome back. This is Bill from Lilac Writer, and I'm going to show you how to convert CD loops or CD drum loops into modern loop files. And we're going to use Studio One to do that. And hopefully we'll also demonstrate a lot of editing technique along the way. So I'm going to drag a file in, and this file is basically the format of a track of an old style CD library that you'd use to load into your sampler or earlier DAWs. And the way that these work is you have a few measures of drums and they usually end on the downbeat. If you zoom in, you'll see that there's an extra downbeat. Now the, f the library says that it's set to tempo 111. So I'm just going to set the song tempo to 111 to get started. And I'm also going to go into the inspector and turn time stretch off. We'll just set this to don't follow because we don't want a time stretch. We want to use the original tempo of the drum loop itself. But now if we look at this, and if I play this back, you'll see that's not actually the right tempo. It's not, it's not indicated correctly on that file. Two, three, four, one. So right here, this is the downbeat of measure two, but measure two is over here. So we're going to use the timeline to calculate the correct tempo. So we're going to get an estimate of the tempo by just dragging this two back to this downbeat. And here's how we do that. We go out to two and put in a tempo, which we can do with this plus side sign over here in the tempo track. So I open the tempo track right here and I close it there. Now I'm going to select this tempo range right here. And while holding down command, I drag the edge over to that downbeat. Now that should give me pretty close to the right tempo. Now if you look over here, it says 129.2. I'm going to guess that that's probably a tempo of 130. So back over here, I'm going to change the tempo to 130. I could make that any anytime I put the cursor within this range and make a tempo change, it'll change it for this section here. I could also make that tempo change down here. Now right here, I don't really need this tempo change anymore, so I'll just delete this. I'm just going to click this region and delete that. And now we can see, at least based on the first loop that we've got, that the transients are falling in the right spot. And you can see that right here, we've got a, an extra downbeat. And on a normal sampler or hardware sample, you would use this to set up your loop. We're basically doing the same thing right here, but we're just going to preset it. Now we could get really picky about this and go in here and trim these up. Right now I'm just going to show you the general idea, the overview of how to do this. So we're, first of all, we're going to turn snap off and cut these into the individual segments. And I'm not going to do all of this. So I'm first of all going to take, just going to bring in the end of it and take, we'll take about six of these and work on about six of them because that'll be enough for the video. Now we'll just use the split tool, which we can select with the keyboard three. And then we'll just go in here. Now I need snap off, so we'll turn snap off. We're going to go out here and get fairly close and put these in just before the transients, just before the downbeat of the very first bar of each of these segments. So we'll get those in there. And this is very simple to do in Studio One. So with those, those are all in now already. I'm going to rewind with the comma key. We'll zoom out. And now we need to cut these apart. But in order to do that correctly, I want to line up these transients to the downbeat. So I'm going to select all and then use quantize event starts. But first, I want to make sure this is set to one bar up here. This is my quantize setting, so I'll set that to one bar. And then I'm going to quantize event starts. I got a little bit of overlap out of that, so I'm going to drag the overlapped events to another track. All right, so those two overlap. And on, on this new track, I need to also check that time stretch is turned on to set to don't follow. Now we'll go back to snap and we'll trim up the back side of this. I'm going to assume, based on taking a look at how these waveforms all line up pretty nicely, 
that this was played with a click. So I'm going to take that on faith here and we'll just trim these up based on a snap setting. Then we'll adjust it from there. So with this still set to one to one, I can go back through and take another pass and trim up the back side. And the trick here was setting the quantize event starts to get these to line up to the grid after the first pass. All right, so that's done already. Now I want to delete the extra junk, so we'll use the erase tool for that. I'm going to just close the browser and the inspector to get a little bit bigger view of what I'm working on here. And now I'll erase. Now, if I hold down the mouse, I can just drag this over anything I want to erase and just sort of use it like an eraser. So no, now those are all gone. The next thing I want to do is consolidate these into one part so I can actually listen to it back in some context. I have snap on set to one bar, so I'll just shuffle these to where they're, they're all lined up. And we've got the magnetic snapping or the adaptive snap, so that's pretty easy to do. Now, let me just audition a little bit of it. It's a little pop there. All right, so there's a little pop between each one because I did a very rough cut as I was doing the edits. And you'll see if you zoom in here that it's not starting perfectly. So the way I'm going to do that is use the editor. I can either open it here, or I can just double click on any of these waves. And the first one, let's get a, you can see the first one's not starting right on. So I'm going to take a look here and how, how do I do a slip edit? A slip edit allows me to readjust the window, uh, the waveform within the window of the event. Slip edit, you can see on the Mac, is Option Command, and that would be Alt Control on the PC. And I'm going to use the editor down here and leave this zoomed in down here. And now we'll just slip this back like that. Now, to go to the next one, I could click up here, but the arrow will take me to the next event so I don't need to click. So I'm going to use the right arrow, which will go event to event. And then down here, I'm going to continue working on these slip edits one by one. Right arrow, slip edit. Right arrow, slip edit. And this workflow is much faster than doing a lot of clicking back and forth between the upper part and the lower part. Now, if you look at something like this, you can see that that's coming in not on a zero crossing. I'm going to slip edit this right back to there. And we'll slip edit this back right here. And now I've gone through the whole thing. I'm going to save these events. Now, the next thing I want to do is check because I'm almost done with these files. Now, Clearly, if we had more time, I would do detailed editing on the beginning and ending of each of these. For instance, on the first one here, I guess that one's not quite right. We'd slip that back, and I'd probably also put a slight crossfade there. And then, and then at the trailing end of that, I would make sure that there was a crossfade here or I'd stretch that out appropriately so that that sounded smooth. You can also addition an individual waveform by setting the loop over it. And you can do that by hitting the P. We'll set the loop over the selection. And then the one key will put the cursor right at the beginning of the loop. And then you can audition. So the timing is right. We might be able to improve the smoothness of the loop point, but we don't really have time for that right here in this video. Now we have our tempo for these clips is 130. We want to check that the file tempo is set. This is important if you're creating loops so that they play back correctly when you preview and when you drag them into your project. So I'm going to go to the inspector, and the lower part here 
is related to the event. So I've selected all the events, and I'm going to type in 130 here as the file tempo, and speed up should also be set to 1 at this point. I'm just going to check them by clicking on each of them and making sure that information is set correctly in those loops. Now I'm going to also select them all again and rename them. So I'll rename this to, I always start with the tempo. So that's the name of that set of loops. And now in the browser, this is extremely easy in Studio One, one of the really cool things. I'll go into the browser here. This is the folder that I've got this project in. I've even created a shortcut into this group here. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to also give it this name, 130 Loose Faith. And that's now right here. And so now I've renamed all those files. I'm going to drag them as a group. So I'll hit Command-A or Control-A on a PC. I'll just drag them all right here. And you'll see, there we go. They're ordered. We can play them back here. And if we have our song and we were to change the tempo now. Well, let's change it to 150 and set this here so we play back at the tempo. I muted the original here. You can hear that they speed up and slow down appropriately. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned to Groove3.com because my series of videos, Studio One Explained and Studio One Advanced, are coming out very shortly at Groove3.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.